Economics is concerned with predicting how people are likely to behave. One of the most well-known theories that does this is called game theory. This simply predicts how people are likely to behave in a situation where they have multiple options. Here's a simple application of game theory in a situation called the ultimatum game. You, player A, are given $10 and told that you have to make an offer to player B of how to split this money. You can offer to give him nothing and keep the $10 to yourself, you can offer to split it 50-50 and have $5 each, or any other offer that you can think of. If player B accepts the offer then you both split the money as agreed, but if he rejects the offer then you both get nothing. <laughs> how do you think player A should approach this game? From a game theory perspective you have to look at what the other player's best response is going to be to each offer and then choose the most profitable offer that they will accept. This offer is called the Nash Equilibrium. Let's look at this from 0 to $10. If you offer him $0, he gains nothing by accepting the offer, but he also gains nothing by rejecting the offer. So this isn't a great option. What if you offer him $1? If he accepts it, he gets $1, and if he rejects it, he gets nothing. So if he's a rational person, he should take this offer. The same applies to any offer over $1. He'll be better off taking that offer instead of nothing. Knowing this, the offer you should make, the Nash Equilibrium, is to offer player B $1, therefore keeping $9 for yourself. It's the lowest offer you can make that a rational person will accept. You could make a higher offer, but you'll be making less profit. For example, if you offered $2, you'd be making a profit of $8 instead of 9 Looking at it this way, this seems like a fairly straightforward decision. So what happened when economists tried this game with real people? The exact opposite of what they'd predicted. When player A's, the ones making the offer, offered $1, the other players rejected the offer and chose instead for both of them to have nothing. Perhaps more surprising is that most player A's, the ones making the offer, offered a 50-50 split of having $5 each. In fact, this was the most common outcome, player A offering a 50-50 split and player B accepting. Nothing like the Nash equilibrium that economists predicted. But why? Why would someone choose to have nothing instead of $1? And why would someone offer the other person $5 when he could offer them $1? The answer lies in one word. Emotions. Standard economics assumes that people are rational economic agents, which means that we make choices which give us the most profit. But that's simply not how our brain is designed. We have specialised neurons in our brain called mirror neurons. This helps us predict other people's emotions and helps us empathise with them. This is why most players offered a 50-50 split. Their mirror neurons knew that if they gave an unfair offer, such as offering $1 to the other player and keeping $9 for themselves, the other player would get angry and probably reject the offer, leaving both of them with nothing. So having anticipated the other player's emotions, they gave a fair offer. This becomes even more clear when people with autism are asked to play this game. Autism compromises the area of the brain that's associated with mirror neurons. As a result, autistic people often struggle to understand or predict other people's emotions. So what happened when they were asked to play this game? They played just like game theory would predict. On average, they made offers that were 80% less than what non-autistic people offered, with some of them offering even less than $1 to the other player. They then struggled to understand why the other players were rejecting the offers, with one of them actually stating that the other players are stupid, how can you reject a positive amount of money and prefer to get zero? They unfortunately couldn't predict how the other players would feel about their offers, and so they played the game the same way a rational person would. So what do these experiments teach us? They teach us that humans are far from perfectly rational people, and that we're good at anticipating each other's emotions, and that's a good thing. It means more than just caring about objective profit, we also value ideas such as fairness and equality. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and check out my other videos.